हेलो 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 माय वॉरियर्स गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग हाउ इज एवरीवन दिस इज श्रेयस हियर योर कैप्टन योर थलाइवा योर ब्रो योर मास्टर टीचर एट वेदांतु एंड आई एम गोइंग लाइव फ्रॉम माय स्टूडियो एट बैंगलोर हाउ इज एवरीवन हाय गायत्री हाय ए ए यालिनी आई कैन सी लॉर्ड ऑफ वॉरियर्स आउट हियर हेलो श्रेयस कपरी हेलो कार्थी Hi Nirmal hello Indu Ankit Venkat Raja Raman welcome aboard welcome aboard welcome aboard so guys how did you enjoy the optics 15 minute revision any idea how much time how many retakes i did for that 15 minute optics video which i posted on catalysis thank you for all the hearts and love all the support that you give me thank you so much i am very good indu 200 retakes well no not so many one hour venkat that's too less thank you shreyas okay yeah. <laughs> well each part took some 6 or 7 retakes i had to make sure that when i'm explaining to you anything like those rays were coming those rays come at the perfect time when i talk Uh, like the rays are converging when i'm talking about convex lens and when i'm talking about concave lens they should diverge so multiple takes out there but i wanted this for all of you so guys i need your support your love that's all those are the only fees that we always ask what are we going to get in fact i was reading one of your comments out there that uh, people ch charge crores for 3 hours movie and you spend 250 300 bucks in a movie theater plus the popcorn and the coke and the traveling and parking fees and all that so roughly around 600 500 rupees for a 3 hour movie and here we are doing it all for free just for you because we want you to be one of these i have produced top 100 all india ranks two digit all india ranks many of my students have even graduated from iits and iits icers bits you name it the happiness that i get is when a student enters into iit when a student you know uh, who is average at least he improves his percentile and reaches somewhere in 90s that's the happiness i get when i teach so thank you guys and for being here and like you guys asked for uh, yeah yeah you wanted the chapter of rotation so here i am with the chapter of rotation it's a marathon series so expect 2 to 3 hours that's the session duration and we are going to have a short break during the uh, uh, session all right thank you guys really for loving it um, well and any doubts that you have please let me know on my instagram handle that stress_vedantu you can ping me over there i'll definitely help you out with any uh, you know problems that you are facing out there in your life in let's say motivation and strategy or planning whatever help you need definitely i'll help you out there all right so before we begin do not forget to smash the like button out there yes do that so that you can show your love and support and if you are new to this channel hit the subscribe button so that you can get your daily dose of updates for j as well as neat so guys today's lecture is for both neat and j how many neat students out here let me know in the chat box how many j students out here let me know in the chat box some student was asking a venkata was asking is it for 2022 yes you uh, even if you are a 2022 student that means you have just entered 12th standard this session is also for you because you would have already studied this session in 11th standard so all the 2022 neat j 2021 neat j so four batches together four kinds of students are there right now over here neat students j students 2021 2022 so four kinds of students all yeah for all these kind of students this lecture is exactly for you very good nice to see all of you a lot of neat students and j students out there very good keep the josh high guys because this is a long 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 session so you might need your bottle of water and i am carrying mine you can carry your snacks watch it and enjoy it and keep a notebook aside so that you can scribble whatever i'm saying all right so before we begin i hope you have hit the subscribe button and remember one more thing guys uh, i'm from we enthuse channel for your daily dose for long term series of 12th standard on we enthuse we have started something called as the path 
finder series that's for 12th standard students and for 11th standard students we have started the nurture series these are long term batches in my 12th standard batch of pathfinder i have already completed electrostatics gauss law and current electricity now i am in capacitors about to end it by next week or so so if you want you can watch all the detailed explanation lectures on vnthus go ahead check it out it's all there all right so that's the vnthus channel all right so let's start with rotation out there let's start with rotation out there okay don't worry venkata don't worry remember where was we enthused one point of time now where we are so yes just have faith patience never get demotivated by anything any obstruction any kind of obstacles in your life always aim high aim for this guy things will be much better all right great great guy thank good to know that yeah yes uh, i'll try and make it karthi as much as possible now any rotating body which uh, you know is rigid rigid means it does not change its shape and size is what we are trying to study in this chapter that's why it is called as rotational mechanics or rigid body mechanics now there is an awesome trick to remember all the formulas of rotation and compare it with the translation motion some of you might already know it in case you have been following me very thoroughly everywhere so let's see what i am talking about now on one side i am going to write rotation and one side i am going to write translation you can also make the same division in your notebooks in case you are writing it out there i hope you are making your notes so i'll tell you how the quantities are related see in translation you have something called as displacement then we go to velocity which is nothing but displacement by time all right and then we go to acceleration which is change in velocity upon the time and then we introduce the term mass which is nothing but inertia and then we go to force which is nothing but mass into acceleration all right net force acting on a body is mass into acceleration and then we also talk about momentum which is mass into velocity and then let's say we talk about you know rate of change of momentum which is nothing but force so force is nothing but rate of change of momentum all these formulas you would have studied in translation and also the formula for kinetic energy the kinetic energy in translation all right is nothing but half m v square so these are the different formulas that you have studied now believe me each term out here has an equivalent term in rotation and let's see what these are so for displacement you have angular displacement what is this called angular displacement I try and recollect this this is like brush up of you know the entire chapter and then we are going to see everything yes that is the entire pdf will be shared on the catalysis telegram channel so go ahead and uh, join the telegram channel out there so nd there are going to be lots of questions don't ask me how many questions are there lots of questions it's a big session 2 to 3 hour session so you know i need lot of energy and your support as well okay so velocity instead of that you have angular velocity which is angular displacement by time remember this is nothing but angular displacement it is measured in radians and this is angular velocity similarly you have alpha alpha is change in the angular velocity upon the time taken to change it then instead of mass what do you have you have i this is the e analog is in rotation this is called as the moment of inertia rotational inertia or moment of inertia and then instead of force you have torque and then you have net torque is instead of mass you have moment of inertia instead of acceleration you have angular acceleration do you see that so many things are related now instead of momentum you have angular momentum instead of mass you have moment of inertia instead of velocity you have angular velocity then instead of force again you have torque and instead of rate of change of momentum you will have rate of change of angular momentum that's how things are related and in the end instead of kinetic energy of translation you have kinetic energy of rotation and you will have half and instead of mass you are going to have i and instead of velocity you are going to have angular velocity square isn't this 
comparison convenient for you guys for you guys to you know study this chapter to give you a roundup of you know all the formulas out here so in case you forget any formulas remember you can always compare and hopefully that will this will give you a slight idea of what these terms are all right so you can take a screenshot and that will be very helpful all right thank you vivian perry so much and i always say whenever somebody says east or west shreyas sir is the best i always say north or south shreyas sir's warriors are the best all right so dhanush is asking don't i get tired i'm really shocked uh, well dhanush i do not get tired but i get um, yeah worked up or you can say you know uh, at at point of time my uh, you know i will be like okay i cannot do this more and then i take my rest and again i will just take uh, watch some movie or maybe um, just relax maybe do some exercises maybe just have my own time and then again i am all fully energized and i am back because you know um, i want to be there for you it's not like uh, you know i want to run away or it's not like you know uh, i feel that okay i should just do this for a few years and then maybe i can just relax somewhere no remember all the students need my help because during my preparation i feel that if i had got some more help i would have done better i do not want you guys to feel the same that oh i should have got somebody better so then maybe you know i would have been in a better iit or a better nit or a better branch so that's why i'm here only for you guys nothing else okay yes so let's get going out here okay so let's talk about all of these terms so what is rotational inertia it is nothing but the resistance to change the state of rotational motion meaning imagine this wheel is rotating you want to stop it it's difficult but how difficult it is that is measured by moment of inertia if it's more difficult then it has more moment of inertia if it's less difficult to stop or to start its motion then it has less rotational or moment of inertia and what does this depend on this depends on three things number 1 it depends on the mass of the rotating body it also depends on the axis yep instead of this axis you rotate it about some other axis it will have a complete different difficulty or ease of rotation the resistance of rotation will be completely different if i rotate it like that so it depends on the axis and how the distribution of the masses is the distribution okay so the distribution of the masses meaning you take the same axis you take the same axis the same tire but now you expand the tire if you expand the tire then as some of the mass is the same axis is the same but the masses are far away it will offer a completely new rotational resistance or moment of inertia okay so it depends on these three things so it is nothing but the resistance to change the state of rotational motion now 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 i okay very good a lot of you are noting it down very good jesse excellent 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 okay uh, well nirmal if a j or a neat aspirant becomes serious like me trust me he will get full marks or uh, at least top 10 or top 100 all india rank for sure if you just work just uh, as much as i work okay that's all i can say okay so let's do this let's fill this table up now these are the standard formulas which you are supposed to remember let's start filling this up let's see how many of you know this come on let me know what is the first answer ring 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 okay what is it m r square very good m r square excellent then disk it is m r square by 2 then hollow cylinder is same as ring you take the ring elongate it it becomes hollow cylinder it's the same formula so it will be m r square and then you have solid cylinder you take the disk and pull it it becomes a solid cylinder it has the same moment of inertia that's how i remember it yep 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 understood the trick ring if you pull it it becomes hollow solid disk if you pull it it becomes solid cylinder so that's how you remember the formulas are same okay this is first set of formulas for all of you next set coming up on your screen excellent is this one let's see how many of you remember for a rod 
for a rod what is the formula for moment of inertia about the central axis guys it is ml square by 3 or by 12 it's 12 okay about the central axis it's 12 keep that in mind okay very good Arga. very good Venkata very good Gayatri Yalini KM Singh and then for a right angled triangle okay it is 1 by 6 yes it is 1 by 6 guys keep this in mind okay into m into this thing which is b square b is the breadth the height doesn't matter okay 1 by 6 mb square provided you're rotating it like this you're rotating it like this okay so you take a triangle and you rotate it so 1 by 6 mb square hollow sphere keep this in mind 2 thirds mr square 2 thirds mr square solid sphere keep this in mind this is 2 by 5 mr square okay these are the standard formulas okay write this down write this down write this down yep i'm putting it up on the screen in the printed form also so that you guys have it in your notes as well shall we start with some questions now ready to solve some questions before that dani very good yalni okay there is one small thing which i would love to mention before we start problems and that is how do we solve problems which involve geometrical additions or subtractions like maybe look at this sphere and some sheet is there okay something this combined body's rotational inertia needs to be found out about this black colored axis what do you do you separate the bodies into individual parts like how you used to do for center of mass for center of mass if there are two geometries and you combine them what do you do you find center of mass for this geometry and then you find the center of mass for this geometry and then you combine them together that's all you need to do so all you need to do is find the moment of inertia of body one find the moment of inertia of body two about the same axis and just add them up as simple as that yes as simple as that came saying once the j advanced dates are out definitely we will start with the advanced series right now the dates have been postponed indefinitely there is no point i want all the students to get a sure shot seat in nit bits you know or triple it next up if something is taken out this looks like some sim card and somebody has punched a hole so this can be thought of as the subtraction of two geometries whenever there is cavity hole etc so it's a big geometry minus some small geometry so what you need to do is subtract the two moment of inertias then you will get the remaining moment of inertia correct so find the moment of inertia of the entire thing about the axis find the moment of inertia of that cavity that part which has been removed about the same line look at that if that part was here the axis will be here okay so just visualize that uh, the part which has been removed is over here so subtract the two you will get the remaining moment of inertia okay i will answer all your doubts but chalo uh, if you can ping me on my instagram handle or leave a comment below after the video ends okay just do that that way i will be able to help you out right now during a live session i think it's not right to answer um, out of the topic doubt right now okay i hope you guys understand yes let's get going to the questions let's see how many of you are able to solve this question find the moment of inertia of a sector of a circle about an axis passing through its center and perpendicular to its plane now this sector makes an angle of 45 degrees 45 degrees come on guys come on come on figure this out there is a sector it makes an angle of 45 degrees and it is rotated like this it is rotated like this what is the moment of inertia think about this come on my warriors come on think what is the answer i'll give you a hint you might have to use addition subtraction type logic come on mr square says siva prasad most of you will get it wrong by the way this is a j mains advanced kind of a question which can be asked in single choice let me tell you that okay come on guys come on come on reading all your chats yo 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 come on come on come on come on siva says mr square what about others what about others come on mr square by eight okay interesting interesting come on come on siddhar says mr square by two Achha. remember m is the mass of this sector okay m is the mass of this sector nothing else 
All right. I'll see what we can do. First of all, complete this disk. Just complete this disk. Okay, just complete it. How many such, you know, things, the sectors will fit in if I make it into a disk? This disk will be how many such sectors? Come on, think about it. If I have, think of this like pizzas. Yeah, pizza slices. How many slices of pizzas will fill in this pizza? Come on, isn't it simple? Yep, eight sectors. Very good. Excellent. These are nothing but eight sectors. Now, what is the formula for moment of inertia of a disk? Well, that's mass of the disk by 2 r square. Achha, what is the mass of the disk, by the way? The mass of the disk will be 8 m because there are eight sectors. Be careful about it. So this will be 8 times m into r square divided by 2. Is that right? Because the disk will have 8 such m's. So 8 m is the mass of the disk. But hold on. What is the moment of inertia of the disk? I think it is nothing but moment of inertia of this sector plus this sector plus this sector plus this plus this. So it is nothing but 8 times the moment of inertia of each sector. Therefore, don't you see this 8 and this 8 will cancel. What will be the final answer for that moment of inertia? Won't it be mr square by 2? Won't it be mr square by 2? Guys, lot of people make mistake here. Did you understand what just happened? 8 and 8 just got cancelled. Now think and tell me, will it matter if it was not 45 but some other degrees, let's say 30 degrees or 60 degrees? Does it matter? Will the final answer change if this angle would have been different? Let me know in the chat box. What do you guys say? Will the answer remain same or will it be different? Will the answer remain same or will it be different? It doesn't matter. Yes, exactly. So the answer will remain same. Think about it. Even if it was 30 degrees or anything else, understand you will have different sectors here. The number over here will also change. It will always cancel out. So let's say for example, this was 90 degrees. Example, this was 90. So you will have four sectors. So this number will be 4m. Here also you will have four. Four and four will cancel. The answer will always remain in mass square by two. The answer won't be different, Giri. I hope you understood. Don't get scared, Giri. Don't retract your messages. Yeah, it's okay to make mistakes. Guys, you are not a student if you are not making mistakes. A student's right is to make mistakes. Understand? It's every student's right to actually make mistakes. If you're not making mistakes, that means you're not learning. Make them, but improve. Let's solve this question together. Let's do this. Okay. Now, there is a cavity and the question says, find the moment of inertia of this thick shell. Inner radius is R, outer radius is 2R. Only this much parts mass is m only this much parts mass is m first of all understand a shell like this okay a shell like this is nothing but a complete solid sphere minus a smaller solid sphere this is of radius 2r this is of radius r this is your shell this is come bigger one minus the smaller one that's it great now it's given this guy's mass is m this guy's mass is m i need these masses without that i won't be able to solve the problem because when i find this guy's moment of inertia i will subtract this guy's moment of inertia minus this guy's moment of inertia when i find their individual moment of inertias won't i need their masses hence i need to first figure out the mass so whenever you solve addition, subtraction kind of problems, the first, you know, lookout should be for, you know, what's the mass of those individual components which are being added or subtracted. Now, here is the logic that I will use. Can I say that mass is proportional to volume because this is a 3D object. Mass is proportional to volume and volume is proportional to the cube of the radius. Think about it, 4 by 3 pi r cube, indirectly mass is proportional to cube of the radius. Everybody gets this? Everybody gets this? Think about it. Now, if I tell you that constant of proportionality is something like k, 
doesn't matter so m will be okay m will be think about it what we can do for this particular point okay just think about it let's try to figure out okay for this guy one second um let's say i call this m1 let's say i call this m2 i think now it's fine yep so think about this m1 will be some k times of r cube i don't know that k it's just proportional that's it it's a constant of proportionality m1 will be k times of r cube similarly m2 will be k times of 2r cube which is nothing but 8 k r cube i hope this is clear everybody fine till this point now when you subtract them m2 minus m1 what is m2 minus m1 m2 minus m1 if you just do that what are you going to get 8 k r cube minus k r cube which is 7 k r cube is that clear what is big mass minus small mass that's going to be the remaining mass m that's going to be remaining mass m okay now what we need to do is write m1 and m2 in terms of m that's it just write m1 and m2 in terms of m your job is done you can see from here k r cube is basically m divided by 7 k r cube is m divided by 7 just put it back over here you will get m1 is equal to k r cube which is nothing but m by 7 that's first thing and m2 will be 8 k r cube that means it is 8 m by 7 i hope everybody understood what we did was nothing but mass proportional to volume volume is proportional to cube because v is 4 by 3 pi r cube using direct relationships i just use simple maths unitary methods and i have got it okay uh, well let's figure this out Arya. Um, hold on maybe you have solved this question before or maybe you know the answer maybe that's why you're posting the answers but that's okay good that's good if you have solved it before now it's simple the final moment of inertia of the shell will be moment of inertia of i2 minus moment of inertia of i1 i2 will be 2 by 5 m2 and that radius which is 2r square 2 by 5 mr square okay minus 2 by 5 okay m1 and then you have r square that's it now take 2 by 5 common and uh, there we go what is m2 m2 is 8 m by 7 just substitute that 8 m by 7 2 r square is nothing but 4 r square okay minus m1 m1's value is m by 7 okay multiplied by just r square now mr square mr square by 7 everything is common so let's take it out so 2 mr square by 5 7 is taken outside what is remaining 8 4 the 32 32 minus there is only one thing remaining over here so guys this is simple 32 minus 1 31 31 into 2 62 so 62 mr square by 35 that's the final answer yes is that clear yes sir can we take density of them equal yes karthi that's what i have done that's why i have put k as same only because the density was same k was equal k is basically something related to density you don't have to worry about it okay that's the simple approach of doing these questions this is very important type of question this can come in need this can come in mains this can also come in single choice or maybe numerical type in advance you never know okay that's the answer great great let's do the theorems two simple theorems many people get confused when to use which theorem so let me tell this to you very clearly first is parallel axis theorem when do you use this if you know the moment of inertia about center of mass if you know the moment of inertia about center of mass and then you want to find the moment of inertia about a parallel axis this is parallel axis then the moment of inertia about a parallel axis is moment of inertia about center of mass plus mass into the shift here the h is the shift how much do you shift it by that's it this is parallel axis theorem there are no limitations you can use it as long as you have two parallel axis 
and one of them must pass through the center of mass. Okay. Akash, don't spam. And help me, Shreya sir. My God, somebody changed his name to help me, Shreya sir. Uh, help me, Shreya sir. Here is the thing. Okay. Why don't you do one thing? Just, uh, you know, uh, ping me on my handle. I'll definitely help you out. I do not want to break the flow of the class. And other guys, please tell others if they are trying to spam that, you know, Shreya sir will answer to you. You can either post it in the comment section after the video or ping me on my Instagram handle. Please do that. Oh my God. No problem. Help me, Shreya sir. I'll help you out. Don't worry. I'm there for you. How much time will the session take? Akash? around two to three hours. So we started at six, maybe eight or nine o'clock. Okay. And you need to sit for three hours because you need to have that habit of sitting for three hours because your examination is for three hours. If you do not have that habit, your concentration will not be good. And that's when you will start making silly mistakes in your actual exam. Next theorem, perpendicular axis theorem. When you have two axes in the plane of this lamina, this is only valid for laminar bodies. If it is not a 2D object, this theorem is not valid. Write it in your notes. If it is not a 2D object, it is not valid. This next theorem, laminar bodies only and Ix and Iy are the moment of inertia in the plane. Then the moment of inertia perpendicular to it is just the addition. Now, what does this mean? A lot of people, uh, you know, never get what exactly this is. So, Let's take the help of Etsy Verma. This is Etsy Verma, right? So what is the meaning of Ix? Ix means you rotate the body like this. You rotate the body like this. This is the axis you can see, x-axis, okay? In this case, Iy means like that. So you rotate the body like this. Yes, you rotate the body like this. So the moment of inertia about this axis plus the moment of inertia about this axis is the moment of inertia about Z. Z means like this. You rotate the book like that. So it comes out to be equal. Is that clear? Everybody understood? This is perpendicular axis theorem. Correcto. Yeah. So write it down. In fact, it will be also given to you in the notes. Um, Talenter, let's see how it goes. But I would also advise Talenter to also join in on VN Thews because right now has started the rank booster series. Before that, I completed zero to hero one shot series for every chapter that you can think of. And right now in the rank booster series, we are doing units to boost your percentile. So I would strictly advise you to start following VNQs as well, because lots of amazing series are running right now on VNQs, which is a Vedantu English channel. Okay, great. Yes, you can watch the flash rotation uh, replays as well. Yep, yep, okay. So let's do some questions. Now this is a very good question. This is something which I also do in my regular batches because I feel this brushes up and this tells you how exactly to use both these theorems and you know how to find moment of inertia. Let's label this axis. Let's say I call this as I1. Let's say I call this as I2. Let's say I call this as I3. I need to figure out what is I1, I2 and I3. Okay, that's a disk. Okay, come on, now think about it. If I want to find I1, I think I need to use perpendicular axis theorem because I do not know the actual value of I1. I just know moment of inertia about this axis. About this axis and this is perpendicular axis and this is m r square by 2. Everybody knows this. The central axis, it's m r square by 2. But hold on. Don't you see don't you see the moment of inertia about this diameter like this and the moment of inertia about a perpendicular diameter both will be i1 only if this is i1 by symmetry this also will be i1 right think about it this also would be i1 it's again nothing but just a diameter that's it so you have this axis this axis both are perpendicular so using perpendicular axis theorem okay the two axes in the plane are i1 and i1 that will give you the green one which is you know i perpendicular which is m r square by 2 this is 2 i1 
therefore i1 will be m r square by 4 yes m r square by 4 very good vartan very good very good so finally you got it excellent now let's figure out once i i1 is done let's try to figure out i2 okay let's try to figure out i2 how do we figure out i2 ah, i know what to do since i know i1 i can see these two axes are parallel so i can use parallel axis theorem so all you need to do is i2 is nothing but i1 plus m into shift what is the shift r look at that this axis to this axis you have shifted it by how much distance r units so that's why so this is parallel axis theorem that's all i have done so i1 i just figured it out it was mr square by 4 plus mr square therefore it's going to be 5 by 4 mr square that's the second moment of inertia excellent excellent so uh, nirmal for which part you are asking for i2 or for i1 please let me know i'll help you out again okay now the last thing for this axis i3 for the dotted line it's perpendicular please keep that in mind okay it's perpendicular like this it's perpendicular so i think i3 and this one both are parallel both are parallel do you see that this one and this one are both parallel so again use parallel axis theorem and that i3 will be that i perpendicular plus the shift m into r square i perpendicular is m r square by 2 plus m r square so it will be 3 by 2 m r square that's it that's it i1 okay nirmal here is the thing if you have a disk won't the moment of inertia about this axis be the same as the moment of inertia of this axis that's all i have done so that's why this i1 and this i1 will be same obviously and their addition will be by perpendicular axis theorem the moment of inertia about that perpendicular axis it's the perpendicular axis look at that okay i hope that is clear is that okay i'm very good nitish thank you very much i hope now it's fine how this comes okay cool this was a disk by the way that's why it is mr square by 2 cool everybody understood shall we go ahead to the next question coming up on your screen we are going to do lots of questions today which is going to help you brush up revise understand clear misconcepts and give you that confidence to solve the questions on rotation trust me after this class you will never say again that oh rotation is difficult at least i can try it on my own and maybe i can start solving more questions that's the whole agenda of today's class find the moment of inertia of a semicircular disk about its diameter let's do this uh, nitish where do you buy hc verma solutions two ways okay i'll just show this to you because this is also very important oh you can go to vnthus and also over here just search for uh, uh what uh, yes hc verma hc verma solutions in vedantu yeah just search for hc verma solutions vedantu do you see this free pdf one and two just click on that and you can download all the chapter solutions right over here but there is something called as short answer questions in H.C. Verma book. This book also has something called as the short answer questions. What you need to do is for that, there is a separate micro course and that micro course details have been put up over here on this VNTU's channel. So if you go over here, there is a video which I have made, Shreyas Sir's micro courses on pro subscription. So you can watch this video, all right. So all my 11th and 12th standard courses have been mentioned out here okay so that's on v and Thu's channel keep that in mind okay so let's do this come on guys let's not get uh yeah too much carried away all right all right all right so what we need to do over here is because we have to find it about the diameter okay because we have to find it about the diameter and this is half of a disc let me first complete it yes let me complete it it becomes a complete circle and 
let me draw the axis as well. This is the axis about which I need to measure it. Now, isn't this the diametrical axis of the disc? If I complete the disc, this becomes the diameter. Let me say this moment of inertia is I1. Let me say the moment of inertia about this axis is I1. Okay? Don't you see the moment of inertia about this axis is also going to be I1? Think about it. If you rotate about another diameter, because this is a complete disc, right? So you rotate it like this or you rotate it like this. It's one and the same thing. Great. And the addition of this and this perpendicular to the plane, it's going to come out. It will be towards you. Yes, it's going to be towards you. That I know is mr square by 2. Correct? But there is a catch. The mass of the disc is no longer m. It is 2m. This is the catch. A lot of people make a mistake over here. Do you guys understand what just happened? Hello, Sujal. Welcome aboard. So, you know, the axis is coming out of the plane. Yep. Cool. So, it, the formula is mr square by 2. But m is the mass of the disc. So, the mass of the disc is m and m together, which is going to make it 2m. Great. So, hence, this will be nothing but mr square only only and using perpendicular axis theorem what will i get m r square this one the perpendicular axis will be equal to what will it be equal to think about it this axis plus this axis the two axes in the plane of the geometry so it will be i1 plus i1 naturally i1 will be how much 2i1 is this so it will be m r square by 2. Now the last thing, last thing, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's do this. Oh, you made mistake in the mass. Happens, Karthi. Now, this is not the final answer. A lot of people think this is the final answer. There is one last step involved. Can you guys think and tell me what's the last step? This is not the final answer. There's one more thing which needs to be done. Read the question, you'll get it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Think about it. Think about it. The question is only for the semicircular disk. But this I1, it's for the complete, it's for the complete disk, right? So, what will be the moment of inertia for the semicircular disk? It will be I1 by 2. Each half will have same moment of inertia. Together they make the complete disk. So hence the final answer will be mr square by 4. Correct. 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 That's the final answer. Remember. So I1 was, you know, for the complete disk about the diameter. It will be this semicircle plus this semicircle together will give you, you know, the complete disk. Understand that. Okay. So that's the catch out here. Yeah. MR square by 2, that's wrong guys, yeah, please be careful. Okay, yeah, this is supposed to be MR square by 4, yeah, okay. Yes, correct. Sujal, so, M was the mass of the semicircle already, understand that. Okay, it was already the mass of the semicircle, keep that in mind. Okay, got it? Chalo. Let's get going to the next question coming up on the screen. And here it is, here it is. Uh, oh, let me also correct. The previous answer, meanwhile, this was not supposed to be mr square by 2, guys. This was supposed to be mr square by 4. So, I think there was a mistake in printing out here. This was supposed to be mr square by 4. Okay. So, just changed it. Let's go to the next question coming up on your screen. And here it is. Three thin rods x, y, z and they are rotated. How are they rotated? They are rotated about the z axis. Figure out the moment of inertia. Yes. 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 Come on, let's see how many of you can figure this out. Three rods each of length L. There are three perpendicular rods. They are being rotated about the Z axis. What's their total moment of inertia? Come on, my warriors. Waiting for all your answers. Oh, yes. Yes. Yep. Yep, it is one by four. Correct. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Figure this out. Yes, Siva Prasad, today we are going to do complete chapter. Complete chapter we are going to do today. 
okay come on guys figure this out yep a b c or d what is the correct answer figure this out it's not that difficult think visualize yep you are going to need need parallel axis theorem first of all understand if i figure out any rods moment of inertia okay i know one thing about the central axis it is ml square by 12 about the central axis but about the z axis about this axis you have to use parallel axis theorem so it will be ml square by 12 plus m shift which is half the length so l by 2 whole square that's going to give you ml square divided by 3 yes you're going to get ml square divided by 3 guys that is what the answer is going to be and then think about it whatever moment of inertia this rod has the same moment of inertia this rod will have again about the same axis it's one and the same thing whether the rod is here or here or here or here as long as you're rotating it like this okay moment of inertia is still going to be ml square by 3 correct and the last step over here this rod will have zero moment of inertia because that rod is being rotated about its axis about its length itself there is no mass which is outside the axis all the masses on the rod are on the axis so that's why the moment of inertia is zero i hope this is clear i hope this is clear understood so hence the final moment of inertia will be nothing but this moment of inertia which is ml square by 3 for this rod for this rod what will it be it will be again ml square by 3 and the zero just for namesake will add it so what is the final answer going to be obviously 2 ml square by 3 yep yep that's all just all. that's all i hope this is clear yes that's what we have done Sujal Paulsar is no longer there on catalysis. So we three, me, Shimon sir, Vazim sir, have, you know, come on this channel because this was predominantly an English channel. And we are from VNTUs. We have been teaching on VNTUs for a very long time. And we want you guys not to be affected just because, you know, some teacher leaves this channel. We want, we are, uh, you know, uh, Vedantu master teachers. You are Vedantu students. So we want to continue the support. We want you guys not to be left unattended because you guys are our students. Remember that. Okay, that's all. Why not to assume it as hollow cylinder, Giri? Rod means a thin rod. The dimensions of the rod, uh, you know, along the breadth or along the radius is negligible. So you can assume it like a line. Always assume rods means like a line. Okay, yes. Let's get going to the next question. Now, before that, torque. So, how is torque defined as? Let's see. Torque is nothing but equivalent of force in rotation. What does force do? It causes acceleration. What will torque do? Torque will cause angular acceleration. So, it will try to rotate a body. Like, if you visit a park and if there is a friend of yours who is on a merry-go-round, you provide a torque to the merry-go-round so that it starts to rotate. And you always apply the force on the end, on the edge, not on the center. If you try and rotate a fan, a disc or open a door, you never apply it at the center, you apply it as far away as possible. So if this is the axis, so what is this? This is the axis or the point about which you are measuring the torque you apply the force here what is this point this is nothing but the point of application this is nothing but the point of application of the force okay what is this r it tells you the position where you apply the force with respect to the axis yes with respect to the axis this f is obviously your force if you extend this line okay this will be angle theta now this force will have two components one component here which will be f cos theta and the one which is here okay which is perpendicular this will be f sin theta 
टेल मी वन थिंग विल एफ कॉस थीटा कॉज द रोटेशन विल दिस फोर्स रोटेट द बॉडी और विल दिस फोर्स एफ साइन थीटा रोटेट द बॉडी कमॉन गाइज आंसर द क्वेश्चन नो प्रॉब्लम गायत्री वी आर सी ऑल वेदांतु चैनल्स आर द सेम वी आर नॉट लाइक अदर इंस्टीट्यूट गायत्री आई मीन लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर हैबिजुएटेड यू नो ओ दिस चैनल ओ दैट चैनल यू कम टू दिस चैनल यू कम टू दैट चैनल यू नो सम पीपल ट्राई टू पुट डाउन अ चैनल एंड सम पीपल ट्राई टू यू नो स्प्रेड सम काइंड ऑफ रूमर्स और पुट सम अदर टीचर्स डाउन बट दिस इज नॉट वेदांतु वेदांतु डज नॉट स्टैंड फॉर ऑल दैट वी आर अ टीम रिमेंबर be it j channel be it a niche channel be it any teacher you know we are all treating everyone the same way we treat all the students the same way so if tomorrow some other student comes and asks me from some other channel something as i do not say that hey you are from that channel why should i help you are not from my channel no that's not what vedantu teachers do guys yep correct f sin theta f sin theta correct f sin theta and that's what is the answer guys f sin theta produces torque and the torque the torque is r into f sin theta but in vector form torque is r cross f so you use the right all right you use the right hand rule to figure out the direction of the torque so r r is the position vector of the force take your right hand take your four fingers put it in the direction of r rotate those four fingers towards f where is f there so r is there f is here rotate it like this where will your thumb come out it will come towards you so that's the direction of the torque towards you so in this case this torque is to be shown like this towards you it is towards you understand that okay i hope this is clear great so all of this has been mentioned again over here so torque is the cause of rotation for a rigid body f sin theta responsible f cos theta along the distance is irresponsible or not responsible for producing any torque remember that okay great yes okay chalo let's get going let's get going well ramanujan i'm not sure uh, which uh, vedantu you are talking about but the vedantu i know covers all the topics okay so um, i i'm guessing you have some kind of misunderstanding out there so understand that we do everything out here you can just go check out my vnthu's channel all right uh, chitra muni we already have uh, teachers in nitelite so they are very good don't worry and i'm always going to be there you know on vnthus and we are going to keep coming out here on catalysis for the neat aspirants and the g aspirants okay chalo let's get going to this question you can see there is a spring there is a rod there is a hinge it is at rest the spring is extended it's holding that rod it's preventing it from falling down the question is find the extension of the spring and what is the reaction force that reaction normal reaction at the hinge okay let's get going to this question so what we need to do is first start with free body diagram okay let's start with free body diagram when you draw fbd make sure you show the forces wherever they are acting lot of people have that habit whenever they draw body mg normal spring force they show it like a point if you have been taught like that please understand that's not the correct way because then you will misinterpret you will not be able to figure out what is the torque produced torque produced needs where these forces are acting from okay chalo let's let's do this first of all weight will act from the center of mass so mg will act here correct spring is extended so it will pull so the force of the spring fs will be kx spring force will be kx it will be acting upwards what is this k the spring constant okay next normal force from the reaction from the hinge this hinge will give some reaction how much i don't know apart from this do you see any other force thank you vijay kumar okay come on come on come on do you see any other force apart from normal weight and spring force let me know in the chat box come on my warriors think about it 
Do you see any other force? Do you see any other force? Yeah? No? Should I consider something else? No, right? Great. Yes, the spring is attached. The spring is supported from the roof. Obviously, you cannot have a spring dangling out there, right? Yeah. So, yes, the spring is attached. So, let's see what we can do. First of all, what is the torque produced by normal? This will be zero. Reason? R is zero. R cross F. What is R? R is position of the force from the axis. Gone. This will be zero. And the reason is since R itself is zero. Great. Torque of mg, I think it's going to be clockwise. mg will try to rotate the rod like this. So the torque of mg will be R, which is L by 2 into mg into sine 90. But that will be clockwise. So hence, it is just going to be L by 2 mg. L by 2 mg clockwise. Everybody fine till here? Last one, spring force, the torque produced by the spring, the distance is L, the force is Kx, the angle is 90, why 90 guys, because R is here, force is there, perpendicular, okay, and it is anti-clockwise, anti because you can see, that spring force will try to rotate the rod this way, cool, so what are you going to get, you are going to get LKx anti-clockwise. But isn't the rod at rest? Since the rod is at rest, can you say the net torque will be zero? The net torque will be zero. So there are only two forces producing torque. So the torque by gravity and the torque by spring force, shouldn't they cancel it? That's it. Ah, achha, you all taught about center of mass. By the way, Sujal, I mean, there is no rule that you have to measure torque from here only. You can measure torque about anything. The answer will come out to be the same. Why did I choose this point? Because I do not know the value of n. So, for simplicity, I chose this point. So that the normal forces torque will become zero. Okay. Now, what do we get? Achha, the torque by mg, which is clockwise, should be balanced by torque by the spring force, which is anti-clockwise. What is the torque by mg? Well, that's L by 2 mg. And what's the torque by the spring force? Well, that's L k x. Achha. So, what are you going to get? L L gets cancelled. So, x will be mg by 2 k. That's the answer. That's the first answer. Find x. mg by 2 k. Done, done, are done. Now, there is only one, one more thing left. What is the reaction force at the hinge? Now, many people get confused. What to do over here? Should I take some other point to measure torque? No, nah, just use Newton's laws. Normal plus spring force will be mg. That's it. Normal plus spring force will be mg. Why? Because it is at rest. All forces should cancel out each other. That's it. So, what is the value of x? Look at it. What is the value of x from here? It is nothing but mg by 2k. It's equal to mg. k and k will get cancelled. Therefore, what is the value of n? mg by 2 goes there. mg minus mg by 2 is again mg by 2. So that is the final answer. Correct. Correct. PES, I have already started uh, you know, classes for 12th standard students on VNQ's uh, you know, channel. So that's a Vedantu channel again. That's where I teach regularly. So please join the Pathfinder series. I mean, just subscribe to VNQ's channel. That's where you are going to get your daily dose of 12th standard. That's called as the Pathfinder series, long-term batch for 12th standard, 11th to 12th. For 12th standard students who have just uh, uh, written the mains and who are going to write the next few exams, for them we have Zero to Hero and we have the Rank Booster series on VNQ's channel as well, okay? Chalo. No problem. Yes, Vijay Kumar, you can cover all your backlogs. You have time, bacha. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. You can do that. Let's see how many of you can do this. Multiple options may be correct. Which of the following is possible if F is the net force, tau is the net torque? All four possibilities are given out here. Let's see how many of you can get this. Uh, Sujal, we assume in J that, you know, X is small only and the spring is linear spring and the spring's properties do not change for the values of X given. 
Okay, so these are all linear springs only for all those arrangers. Hooke's law is obeyed always. Okay. Yes. Okay, A, B, C, D says Nirmal. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Come on, my warriors. What do you guys say? Come on, come on, figure this out. B, D says Raja Ram. Gayatri says B, D. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's do one by one. Okay, let's do one by one. Force is zero, torque is zero, obviously possible. Imagine there is a donkey, okay? There is a donkey over here. Yes, this is a donkey. The only two forces are weight and normal and it is at rest. What does a donkey do? It stays there, right? So obviously the force on it is zero and you obviously do not have the donkey which is rotating. The donkey is not rotating, the donkey is standing over there. So obviously this option is correct. Force is zero, torque is zero, it's possible. Force is zero, torque is not zero. Force is zero, torque is not zero. Let's think about such uh, particular situation. I think it is possible. How? Well, 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 look at this. Imagine, imagine, okay, you have some body, you apply a force here and apply a force here. Both are equal and opposite. They both are equal and opposite. Torque is there. It is rotating, but net force is zero. Do you see that? So force is zero, but torque is not zero because it is rotating. So even this is possible. In fact, this is called as couple force. Couple force. Yes, force by a couple. Great, great. Now, next thing, force is not zero, but torque is zero. Force is not zero, but torque is zero. Think about it. Come on, guys. Is it possible or not possible? There is no net torque, but there is force. Yes. I mean, imagine a body which is just translating. It's translating. Okay. But there is no rotation. There is no rotation. So torque is zero, force is not zero. Possible, possible. And this, obviously possible. Obviously possible. Imagine, imagine you take a donkey and throw it in the air. Yes, this is a flying donkey, guys. Okay, this has been thrown as a projectile motion. It's going like this. And this donkey is spinning. So torque is also not zero, force is also not zero. So this is also possible. I hope this is clear. All four things are possible. Okay, a lot of people think one of them is not possible, but remember all the things are possible out there. Interesting question, A, B, C, D, all green. Great, let's get going to the next question. Now this is a beautiful question. This is beautiful question. Amazing, go. very good. Now find the maximum height. Now this uh, is a block which is sliding. Find the maximum height so that the block does not topple. Questions on toppling. Mu is given, base is given, everything is given. Now, it happens, right, when you are trying to push a large cupboard or almira. Have you experienced this? Imagine if this was you, this was you. Yeah, you, you're trying to push it and then some obstruction is there, the ground is rough and the almira falls and that's it, you get a flying chapel on your face from your mom because you broke the cupboard or something. Has it happened? Has it happened? Very good, Bhavna, clear. Okay. Yeah, you're pushing something and it fells this. Thank you, Ham Sadhwa Jam. Okay. It has happened, right? Why is this happening? Let's try to figure this out. Now, you push the cupboard. It's moving with some speed. But because of friction, because of friction, which is mu, mg what is mg the weight okay let's draw it here mg which is that thing but the weight you know it is slowly decelerating what is it doing it is decelerating where is the velocity the velocity is here its motion is there but the acceleration is here it is accelerating here, acceleration opposite to velocity, that means it's decelerating. Okay, next up, if it is to just topple, if it is on the verge of toppling, 
don't you see all the points of that cupboard will almost lose contact and only this will be the point of contact don't you see that it's on the verge of stopping all these points have lost contact so won't you see that the normal force would shift on the end when it is just on the verge of stopping out there hello surya think about it when if it is not on the verge of toppling then the normal force will not be here it might be somewhere else but when it is about to lose contact and it is going to topple over this edge when it is about to topple over this edge you know as it is moving okay all these points would have lost contact the normal force will shift over there great now there is only one thing remaining sit this is very important observe what i am saying sit on the block make the block as your reference frame and let me know in the chat box is this block inertial frame of reference or non inertial frame of reference sanjeev why does this happen because of friction it's trying to decelerate and because of inertia the block has a tendency to move ahead so it's like when you are running very fast and you break you fall forward right so that is what is happening so the block is trying to topple forward yeah because of the friction non inertial beautiful now if it is a non inertial frame won't there be a pseudo force and where does pseudo force act pseudo force acts opposite to the acceleration that's the rule pseudo force will always act opposite to the acceleration now in this case that's why i showed the acceleration acceleration is here so pseudo force will be there and that's why i am going to show the pseudo force like this now you might be wondering sir why the hell did you take pseudo force why the hell did you take pseudo force i took pseudo force because or rather i took block as a frame of reference because in that frame of reference the block is at rest there is no motion it appears to be at rest hence all the torques will cancel out but if you sit on the ground and observe it then it will be very complicated it will unnecessarily lead to a lot of confusion so sit in something where you know things are at rest and things become easy to solve that's all okay and what's the value of this pseudo force is the mass of the body into acceleration that's it okay cool now by newton's second law okay by newton's second law okay force is equal to mass into acceleration acha so if you sit on the ground frame from the ground frame what will you see okay from the ground frame or oh, okay you don't even have to sit in the ground frame it's okay from this frame only uh um, if you sit on the block and look at the block obviously the block is at rest right so can i say mu mg and ma will cancel each other there will be no net force because the block will be at rest with respect to itself where am i sitting i am sitting on the block and looking at the block if i'm sitting on something and looking at that thing obviously it will be at rest so net force will be zero so a will be mu g you can see mm gets cancelled a will be mu g cool next next what are we going to do let's see from that block frame is the block rotating no right so since the block is at rest from that frame that we have chosen what does this tell you it means the net torque must be zero yes the net torque there should be no net torque and which point do i choose for measuring the torque should i choose this point center this edge top edge left edge down bottom right edge which point should i choose i think we should choose such a point from where most of the torques will give you the answer as zero most of the torques will have zero as the answer because it will keep our calculation simple if you measure about this edge then this normal will produce a torque if you measure about this edge all forces will produce a torque but if you measure about this edge then i think things are going to be simple because this friction is passing through that point so when some force passes through that point torque is zero normal no torque only pseudo force 
and mg will produce torque i hope this is clear yeah down bottom right side so the torque of friction the torque of friction and the torque of normal will be zero and the torque of mg think about it about this point okay about this point mg will produce about this point mg will produce this kind of torque what is that anti clockwise okay and that will be balanced by pseudo force pseudo force will produce clockwise torque so the torque produced by pseudo force that's it now just substitute the values how much is mg's torque what is this distance r cross f right so you need r first and f what is r the whole breadth divided by 2 what's the breadth given the breadth is given as l by 2 into mg okay is equal to torque of pseudo force this is h this is h by 2 h h by 2 so this will be h divided by 2 into the value of pseudo force what is the value of pseudo force m a but hold on i just know what is the value of a the value of a is mu g so lot of terms are going to get cancelled m m g g and anything else i don't think so oh yes this two also will get cancelled this two and this two so what was the question the question was find that height so this h will be l okay and that mu will come below nothing else is there in the answer l by mu that's the answer many people ignore the pseudo force they get weird answers this is a very good advance or i can say a good level neat or a good level mains question correct no correct no this question will be only solvable by toppers or those people who are going to top the NEET or the JE examination. Many people will get a wrong answer. Yes, that's the okay. answer. Let's go to the next part of this. Let's go to the next part. Now, I want to talk about Newton's second law. Thank you, Vengada, for all that fire and energy. Come on, guys. Are you guys full of George, full of energy? Let me see the chat box on fire. Very good, very good. Kaitri, yes, pakka, pakka. She says, that means you're going to be the topper. Very good. H2O break after some more time. Okay. Alive. How many people are alive? How many people are zombies? Let me know. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Put some fire in the chat box. Okay. Newton's second law in rotation. Come on, guys. Let's do this. First of all, just like you have F is MA, same way. Just like in translation you have force is mass into acceleration actually this is net force so in rotation what do you have net torque is moment of inertia into alpha and in vector equation it should be like this that's it so if there is torque then there is angular acceleration if there is no torque then there is no angular acceleration as simple as that very good, very good Bhavna, very good Nirmal, very good Gayatri, Jami, Venkata, Karthi, excellent Giri, excellent, excellent, yes, tau is equal to I alpha, let's do this, so let's solve some questions based on this, torque is I alpha, remember where, whichever axis you measure the torque about, this I also should be about the same axis, you cannot have two different axes, then it won't make sense, okay, let's do this question, Remember, in the previous example, previous to previous rather, there was the same rod, but there was a spring and the rod was at rest. The spring was extended, it prevented it from falling down. Now in this question, the rod is left free and it is going to accelerate. So let's draw the free body diagram again. First of all, there will be again some normal reaction here. Mg will act from the center of mass. Nothing else apart from this. Yes, nothing else apart from this is the force. But there will be some angular acceleration alpha. That's it. Now let's start with Newton's law. Okay. So in rotation, in rotation, what will I say? Net torque is moment of inertia into alpha. Is normal going to produce any torque? Normal going to produce any torque? No, right? Uh, no problem, Nirmal. Yeah, please take care, bacha. Yeah, you can watch it. Don't worry, it will get recorded. 
but I would be I would have been very happy if you were alive because the feeling of life class is completely different. But yeah, your health is priority. Please take care. Okay, is normal going to produce any torque? No, right? Zero. Is mg going to produce torque? Yes. How much? R F. R is L by two. So L by two into mg. That's it. Next up, moment of inertia. What is the moment of inertia of the rod? A lot of people are going to think it is ml square by twelve. Wrong. You are hinged. You have hinged it about the end point. That means you parallel axis theorem. You should know it by now. It is ml square by three. So where did I get this from? I got this as ml square by three by parallel axis theorem. So you just do ml square by twelve plus m l by two whole square. That's where you get it from. Okay, you can do the math into alpha. Do not forget. I alpha. That's it. Now a lot of things are going to get cancelled. Let's see what and all will get cancelled. Okay. So L and L, M and M. I think that's about it. And therefore I'm going to get alpha is equal to three G by two and one L. That's the answer. Yes. Very good. Very good. Very good. So that's the first answer. But there is one more question. And this is the tricky part. Lot of you are going to make mistakes out here. The second part of the question says, "What is the reaction at the hinge?" Now the rod is not at rest, so think again. Normal will not be equal to mg. Lot of people think, "Oh, I know. Normal is equal to mg." Now the rod is not at rest; it is accelerating. So what will it do? It will cause acceleration. But whenever you talk, About translation, okay. Whenever you talk about translation, and you write net force is m into a, this a is which points acceleration. Type it out in the chat box. This a is which points acceleration. Think about it. Do you guys remember, or do you have some idea? When I write net force is m a, which point on the rigid body is acceleration? Hi Samla, I am very good. Welcome aboard. Which point's acceleration is it? Come on, do you guys remember? Not remember? Yes, Sahil Goel has remembered it. Very good. It's always the acceleration of the center of mass. Correcto. No, not of the edge. Okay. This is the rule. Net force is always mass into acceleration of center of mass. Where is the center of mass here? So what is the acceleration of center of mass? It's alpha r. What is r? R is l by two, l by two. But what is alpha? Three g by two l. Alpha is three g by two l, and there is l by two. L l gets cancelled, and we will get this as three g by four. So this acceleration, which I'm going to substitute over here. Is three g by four? I got it. Substitute it. You'll get it now. Mg. It's downwards minus upwards is equal to mass into the downward acceleration. Okay. So therefore, n will be equal to mg. Take that n there. Take this over here. Minus three mg by four. One minus three by four is one by four. So n will be equal to mg divided by four. That's the second answer. What is the reaction force? Yeah, clear, clear, clearo. Everybody understanding this? Everybody got this? Everybody fine till this point of time? Shall we go ahead? Yeah, let's do the next question coming up on your screen. Okay, so three g by two l, mg l by four. Okay, this one is easy. That's not difficult. Uh, uh, Sahil, center of mass. Uh, will always have, be considered for translation. Center of mass is never considered for rotational motion. So whenever you write F is equal to m a, that a always stands for the linear acceleration of center of mass. And whenever I write net torque is I alpha, that's always for the rotation. So always you have two different kinds of equations. Remember that. Okay. So uh, that's why I took this uh, problem because people uh, forget when you use F is m a and tau is equal to I alpha. Okay, cool. Let's do this question. There is a force acting on this wheel. Uh, diameter, radius, everything is given. Find the velocity after ten seconds. Okay. 
if we have to find angular velocity what do we need what do we need think 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 omega final is omega initial plus alpha t do i know omega i yes do i know alpha no do i know time i think so where is it 10 seconds and this is what we need to figure out omega final oh how do i find alpha oh i know this i need to use torque net torque is i alpha do i know the torque i think so i can figure this out 50 newton is acting at a distance of 5 meter so torque will be r which is 5 into a, dist a distance into force okay that's the torque and what's the moment of inertia well it's a ring so for a ring what is the formula m r square what is the mass where is the mass m r what is r 5 square into alpha you can clearly see what will happen now this 5 and this 5 will go correct and this 0 and this 0 will go so what are you going to get alpha as come on guys 2 5s are 10 what is it 0.5 yep very good 0.5 but this is radian per second square correct now take this alpha and put it over here that's it so omega final will be 0 plus 0.5 into 10 which is 5 radian per second that's the answer excellent uh, we enthuse fc uh, there were some other commitments that's why you know um, no special session on uh, VNTU's channel, that's why. And plus, I'm conducting a marathon session, so I need a lot of energy for this, I understand. Once I take a marathon session, I'm, I would not be in a position to take any other class as well. Okay, let's get going to the next one. Okay, so that's the answer. Now, pulley problems. I will teach you a trick. After this, you will never face problem in pulley problems, okay? So let's see. What is that trick? What is that trick? See, one way, the traditional way for pulleys with masses, remember this pulley itself, which is like a disc has a mass, there is always a catch when you draw the FBD. Like, the traditional FBD which you have been drawing in Newton's laws. One, for the 4M mass, there will be weight downwards, tension upwards, because 4m is bigger, right? It will accelerate down. 4m will go down, m will go up. And as it goes, the pulley will also rotate. 4m goes down, m goes up, and the pulley rotates. Okay. Similarly for m, weight downwards, tension upwards, acceleration also upwards. Yes, correct, Yarni. Yes, very good, we use FC. Now, the problem is this tension and this tension are not the same. Because when you draw the free body diagram of the pulley, you will understand if both the tensions were equal, then how the hell did this pulley rotate? Think about it. So, if both the tensions are equal, there is no way the pulley could rotate. That means these tensions in pulleys with mass are always different. So, that's the reason why I show it as T1, T2. Now, you can write your equations and you can get the answer. What are the different equations that one would write? So, Let's say for the 4m mass, okay, there is 4mg here, there is acceleration here. So one would write 4mg minus T2 is equal to 4m into A. Bigger force minus smaller force is mass into acceleration. Similarly, for that m mass, well, one would say T1 minus mg is equal to ma. That's one more equation. I need one more equation because I have one, two, three variables and only two equations. So that third equation will come from the pulley's equation. How? Like this. So for the pulley, understand uh, T2's torque will be more, T1's torque will be less. So torque by T2 will be R into T2. R is this, R into T2 minus R into T1 because it is opposing and this pulley has some angular acceleration alpha alpha is a by r remember that so this torque will be i alpha where this i is mr square by 2 because it's a disc multiplied by alpha which is a by r 
Now, if you have the patience, solve these three equations. So when you solve these three equations, guys, you will get the value of acceleration. But there is a trick. Yeah, but there is a trick. What is the trick? If you want, you can note down this equation. You can take a screenshot. You can also watch it in the replay. The trick is opening up method. Okay, what is this opening up method? What you do is take these blocks and rotate it about the pulley and bring it into a straight line so that it is now a 1D problem. Something like this. Take this masses, open it up. But when you open it up, remember weights are acting down, even their forces will rotate. Something like this. Open it up. Now, it's simple. Take them as a system. This pulley is useless. This pulley is useless. So don't worry about it. Because 4m had a weight down when you rotate it, this weight will be here, 4mg. And this m this weight will go like this mg and this guy was accelerating like this so acceleration will be here this m was going up so now it will go like this that's it now what you need to do now what you need to do is treat it like 1d problem forget the tension and just remember this acceleration is big force minus small force upon translating mass plus rotational equivalent mass. This is the formula. What is it? Bigger force minus smaller force upon translating mass plus the rotational equivalent of the masses. Now observe how to do this. What is the bigger force? Well, that's 4 mg what is the smaller force well that's mg nothing else divided by what are the masses which are translating 4m and m just add them up 4m plus m plus whenever you have to write rotational equivalent of the mass remember this means the mass multiplied by that factor in the moment of inertia formula that factor which comes in the moment of inertia formula for a disk what is the formula half m r square half m r square correct so half is that factor half is that factor for the disk understand so for the disk the factor is going to be half now, put that factor and what is the mass of the disk? Well, that's 2m. So, just put 2m. Now, this is simple. 4mg minus mg is 3mg. And the whole thing divided by 4m plus m plus m. What is it? It's 6m. Great. So, this will be g by 2. This is an easy way of doing it. Once you get used to it, trust me, this will be very easy. Trust me, this will be very easy. Okay, is that clear everyone? Everybody understanding this? This is how this has to be done. Let's do one more question on this. So the answer is G by 2. Yep, let's do this. Okay. Now this is one more question. I think let's use opening up method and see what happens. Okay, so if you use opening up method, take this 3M mass, move it here. Take this M mass, move it here. Both the pulleys are identical, have mass 2M each. Let's do this. Yep, yep, yep. So, opening up method, just open it, 3M and M. So, let's see what do we get. Let's see what do we get. Again, these two together are one single mass. Think of it that way. 3M will have 3MG force. M will have MG force. Correct? And now they will accelerate. So, the acceleration will be big force minus small force divided by translating masses which is 3m and m plus rotating masses now each of the pulley has a mass 2m so rotational equivalent will be 2m multiplied by that factor what is it it's a disc so half same thing this will be also 2m 
into half each one of them will be m each one of them will be m so it will be m plus m these are the rotating masses rotational equivalent masses so just do this what is the answer guys come on very good sahil goel yalni excellent the answer is g by 3 g by 3 isn't it simple isn't it simple yep so this is how you are supposed to do this g by 3 correct okay now that we have done this let's quickly go to rolling motion slipping motion and then we are going to go to angular momentum and energy okay let's do that come on i hope you guys are all pumped up do not let your guard down no matter what you have to complete this chapter today you have to revise this chapter today let's do this now if i take a random quadrilateral okay and it is toppling okay it falls once it falls again it topples over this edge and goes like this and then it falls and it falls and again it topples you will see that when that quadrilateral falls okay there is this point of contact this edge now in this case that edge itself is slipping that edge itself is slipping it's sliding it's rubbing that floor so it's like you know that quadrilateral topples and this point is sliding like this now imagine it does not slide so what happens this topples this point stays there until the next edge comes here and then that next edge topples until this next edge falls and again it does not move until the next edge falls so what will happen guys think about it if i now make that quadrilateral into a hexagon or pentagon every time one edge falls that edge will not move until the next edge falls and i extend this from octag uh, from pentagon to hexagon to octagon to a big polygon very large number of sides the polygon which has very large number of sides is nothing but a circle exactly so nandini rotational equivalent mass i'll tell you what it is nothing but the factor which comes in moment of inertia into the mass of the rotating body like for ring the factor is 1 for solid sphere it's 2 by 5 for hollow it's 2 by 3 for disk it's half so half into the mass that's rotational mass okay yes okay great yalni also answered it so what my point here was if the edge stays at rest and if i convert that polygon into a circle you can see when you have a rolling object when you have a circle which is rotating it's like every time that circle is toppling over its edges yes every time that circle is toppling over its oh my god where is my circle yeah there is my circle it's toppling over its edges and that point of contact is not moving that is called as a rolling motion understand but if that point of contact itself slides then it is called as slipping motion that is called as slipping motion okay so now there is a different way of looking at rolling guys now rolling is nothing but rotation plus translation yes it is rotation plus translation i'll tell you how a rolling body is rotating spinning about its axis and simultaneously it's moving ahead the axis is moving and it is spinning so you can see that out here so there is translating wheel if it is just translating and then this is complete rolling motion so see how it adds up this is only spin yes it is just spinning now you add it to translation if you superimpose both of them what are you going to get you are going to get the complete rolling motion yes so to talk about it geometrically or mathematically if you just consider translation then all the points will move with the same speed as that of the center vc is the speed of the center all points are just moving with the same speed if you just consider the spin motion about the axis then all the points move tangentially all the points move tangentially now when you superimpose both of them what you get is the resultant velocity at every point so look at this 
this point was translating like this. This point was having tangential velocity like this. So the total velocity will be this guy's and this guy's vector addition. Similarly, if you take this point, this point was translating and tangentially it was going this way. So add both of them, both the velocities will get added over there. Same thing over here. This point was moving tangentially downwards. Translationary, it was moving this way. So if you add both of them, you are going to get the resultant velocity. And for the bottom most point, this point was translating forward and it was moving tangentially backwards. So they are going to cancel out each other. Now they'll perfectly cancel out each other. Okay, Vc will be equal to Vt so that the net velocity will be zero like you can see over here only in case of rolling motion rolling motion so when it rolls so when it rolls only then the point of contact is at rest but if it does not roll if it does not roll if it slips then things are different yes in case of slip Vt is not equal to Vc. Keep this in mind. What is v, Vt? Vt and Vc. Understand? Vc is the speed for translation. Translation of the center of the wheel. What is Vt? The tangential velocity. What is tangential velocity? That's omega r. So if V is omega r, it is rolling. If V is not equal to omega r, then it is slipping. Is that clear, everyone? Everyone clear about this? Everyone clear about this? Okay, shall we go ahead? Let me know in the chat box. Come on, let's... Yeah, cool, cool. <clears throat> okay, okay. Come on, my warriors, figure this out. Just write down all, all of this in the notes. Very, very important. Okay, cool. Now, there are two kinds of slipping. This is very important. There are two kinds of slipping. First kind is backward slip. And the second kind is forward slip. Backward slip and forward slip. The name itself has the meaning. Backward slip means this point has net velocity backwards. This point has a net velocity backwards. So think about it, which of these two should be more? So if this point should have net velocity opposite, opposite to the motion of the wheel. So guys, who should be more, Vt or Vc? Obviously the backward velocity should be more. So Vt is more than Vc. Think about it. Only then the resultant, because of that, what will happen? The resultant point of contacts velocity will be in this direction, opposite. Similarly, if I talk about forward slip, yes, if you talk about forward slip, then this point should have resultant velocity in the direction of the axle or the center of the wheel. So how can this point have net velocity here? If this velocity is more than this velocity. So this is true when Vc is more than Vt, understand that. So that's why the point of contact will have forward motion, understand that. This is how it will be. Is that clear? Is that understood everyone? Let me know. Okay, cool. Now, if this much is understood, let's get going ahead. I have created beautiful notes for all of you. And I will give it to all of you regarding friction, regarding work done, everything in one slide. Rolling, forward slip, backward slip. Look at that. In rolling, point of contact is at rest. Forward slip, point of contact has same direction as that of the center. Backward slip, point of contact has reverse direction as that of the center. And these are the things that you should keep in mind. All these things are important. 
static friction will act because there is no sliding and there will be no work done by friction this is the key important point in case of rolling remember this very very important friction does not do work for rolling whereas for forward slip there will be kinetic friction because friction will be slight uh, you know there is relative sliding so there will be kinetic friction and there will be negative work done by kinetic friction in both the cases it will suck away the energy there is slipping like when you apply slam the brakes or when you over accelerate you have a burnout the wheels skid negative work is done by the friction very very important slide out here for all of you all of this will be provided as pdf later on don't worry let's do some more questions but before that remember one more thing okay remember one more thing if this is the center okay this has some velocity okay obviously there will be also some angular velocity that it has okay and in that case v will be equal to omega r but if if v is not constant then this will have some acceleration and this will have some angular acceleration there will be some angular acceleration in that case a will be equal to alpha r. that's it as simple as that so remember only in case of you know a constant speed v will always be omega r but if v is not constant then a will be equal to if it is accelerating a will be equal to alpha r apart from v is equal to omega r. keep this in mind okay so this is something which you will need later on now let's do some questions based on this here is your first question look at this weird looking bicycle this bicycle has a big tire in the front small tire at the back so which one will have more angular speed which uh, one uh, central axis will have more speed think about it okay which tire will have more angular speed less angular speed and which central axis will have more linear velocity this is very interesting let's see how many of you can do this come on my warriors figure this out figure this out second tire first tire think about it <clears throat> okay one thing is clear this axis and this axis both should have the same velocity obviously vc should be equal to vc for the front and for the back tire reason if it is not then obviously this frame will break how can these two velocities be different front has more speed back has less speed obviously it will break it will bend obviously it is not true so both of them have the same speed and remember v is omega r so for the front r is big for the back r is small so this is for the back this is for the front yes so guys if r is big front omega is less and if r is small the back omega is more so which one has more angular velocity that's the back one the smaller one will rotate really fast the large style will rotate slowly because it has a larger radius that's it yep that's how it works okay so that's the answer guys the smaller one has more angular speed back one has less but both of them have same speed let's see the next question coming up on your screen the disc is rolling without slipping on a frictionless surface okay it is given it is rolling which point has the highest speed come on compare the speeds let's see how many of you get this question come a question coming up on your screen very very important question okay come on come on come on come on come on let's see ankit says a jishnu says hello welcome uh chemistry lover you will not get it in telegram just buy it na i mean how many rupees is it this book says 232 rupees so two books around maximum 500 rupees or something just buy it off man let there be a hard copy okay don't watch so much of computer also okay so guys see the point which is closest has less velocity the point which is far has more velocity the point which is even farther has even more velocity because this is at rest it's as if the entire wheel is toppling over this edge 
yes it is rotating it is rotating over here so as you go far like the blades of a fan v is omega r so hence the correct answer is a guys vq more than vc more than vp this is more this is less this is even less that's how this work yes the velocity is directly proportional to radius v is omega r more r more velocity this q has largest r p has smallest r that's why it works okay let's see how many of you can get this uh, shivam you did not understand that acha remember bachcha where did we go where did my remote go yes now i had told you that if you have a polygon okay it topples over this edge okay topples over this edge each point will have a velocity remember v is always omega r this is a standard result from circular motion only now this circle is also a polygon with infinite edges where this edge is at rest so every point will have a velocity perpendicular to r and v will be equal to omega into r where r is this distance so more r more velocity i hope it is clear now is it clear jihil meher i just discussed this before i started rolling motion yeah i just start, started my rolling and slipping concept from here okay i hope now it is clear yeah now it is clear shivam says yes okay gol jili meher i hope it is now understood okay cool let's get going ahead okay this one okay chemistry uh, lover whatever sessions are for 12th are also applicable for droppers chemistry lover there is no special thing extra thing because obviously the problems will remain the same it's just that you have to revise things properly okay now how about this is this forward rolling or backward rolling come on think about it is this forward slip sorry forward slip or backward slip come on guys figure this out is this forward slip or backward slip come on come on come on come on is this forward slip or backward slip well 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 see the center is moving with 5 meters per second if the center is moving with 5 meters per second then every point will not only have this 5 meters per second velocity but it will also have the tangential velocity every point will also have that tangential velocity so what is that tangential velocity that's omega r what is omega where is omega where is omega it is 4 okay what is r r is 1 okay so what is omega r going to be it's going to be 4 meters per second so this point is moving ahead by 5 meters in 1 second but also moving back by 4 meters in 1 second so what is the resultant velocity what is this point's actual velocity then 5 i had 4 backwards so effectively it is moving 1 meter per second so think about it is in this velocity parallel to the center's velocity velocity of point a is parallel to the velocity of the center what kind of slip is this this is forward slip yes this is forward slip very good very good very good yes so uh, usha rani see i'll explain you what is uh, you know tangential velocity and all that if you take a fan if the blades are like this any rotating body haven't you seen this point will have less velocity this point has more velocity this point has more velocity this is your tangential velocity v is omega r so any rotating body each particle has different tangential velocity but all of them have same angular velocity so you can see the r for each one of them is different the r is different so this is nothing but tangential velocity so same thing over here also okay i hope this is clear okay let's get going to the next part now this is a very important formula the derivation has been placed over here you don't need to know know all of that but this is very important formula if you have any body which is rolling down an inclined plane then use this formula what is the formula for acceleration if this is a body which is rolling down an inclined plane so that means there is angular acceleration also then this acceleration is given by g sin theta 
upon 1 plus factor in moment of inertia. Basically, what this factor in moment of inertia means? If it's a disk, what is the formula for moment of inertia of a disk? Half mR square. So this half is basically that factor. If this was a solid sphere, if this was a solid sphere, what will that factor be? 2 by 5 mR square. So this 2 by 5 will be that factor. That's it. That's as simple as that. You don't have to remember some crazy formula. So any, any object is given, just use this formula. You'll find the acceleration. And yes, you can write it as i by mr square but don't you think dmy kids youtube that it's more complicated to write i by mr square isn't this simple factor of moment of inertia you know factor for solid sphere solid cylinder uh, etc so that is more simpler in your books it is written down as i by mr square it's one of the same thing by the way and if you want to find anything else like friction or maybe I don't know alpha or anything you can always write down your Newton's laws or torque equation and get it okay so that's how this works okay so let's do this question very beautiful question let's see how many of you can get this two solid cylinders equal identical and they run a race from rest from the top of an inclined plane one cylinder slides another cylinder rolls then which one will reach first which one will reach first? Come on, my warriors, figure this out. Come on, come on, come on, figure this out. This is very easy. You can easily do this. Think about it. What should be the answer? Think about it. What should be the answer? Come on, my warriors. Think if you have, yes, if you have two situations, in first case, it slides. In the second case, it rolls. In this case, it slides. If it slides, then only there is translation. There is no rotation. There is no rotation, understand. But in the second case, there is velocity and there is a rotation. Guys, come on. This is very easy now. This is very easy. If it is just translating, what will the acceleration be? The acceleration will just be g sin theta. It's just like a block which is sliding down. There is no friction. There is no rolling. Nothing. It's just g sin theta. Whereas if it is rolling, I just gave the formula g sin theta upon 1 plus factor. This is some extra number. Do you see this number is bigger here? Here. In this case, it is just one, right? There is no one plus something. So what does it mean? Which acceleration is more? Which acceleration is more? This or this? Come on, guys. Which acceleration is more? The red one or the black one? Obviously, the one which has bigger denominator will be smaller. The one which has less denominator will be bigger. So this is more. This is more and this is less. So one which has more acceleration will reach faster. So that's why the sliding cylinder will reach the bottom first. And obviously with greater speed because it has more acceleration. Correct. Now this is how you need to solve the problem. Okay. Chal. That's why I said this, uh, this formula is very, very useful. So that's the answer option A. Let's get going to the next question coming up on your screen. Very, very important question. So there is a rolling cylinder. Okay. And we need to figure out what is the frictional force acting on it. Okay, so very simple. The cylinder is rolling. It has some acceleration. I need to figure out how much is the frictional force acting on it. Now to do that, to find out friction, I think I will need alpha because gravity and normal, at least both of them will not produce any torque. Look at that weight, torque produced by weight, torque produced by normal is zero about the center. Look at the question. The question is find the frictional force. To find the friction, what I've done is drawn the FBD and I just figured out that the normal and the weight does not produce any torque about the center. So only friction is producing torque. So the torque produced by friction will be I alpha, but 
what is moment of inertia well it's a solid cylinder so it is going to be m r square by 2 and what is alpha alpha is a by r remember alpha is a by r Achha. r r goes so i'll get m by 2 into a a value that is something which i have already figured out i mean that was just a formula so that was nothing but g sine theta upon 1 plus that factor correct that was 1 plus that factor now think about it what will be the torque produced by the frictional force torque is rf right so r into f but what will the frictional force be equal to frictional force remember is mu n but n is mg cos theta n is mg cos theta that's it now cancel mg cancel mg now things are going to be little bit simple oh i think i may uh, i missed one r out here yes there was one r out here which was missed my bad so i have to keep that r i think in the next step this r and this r will get cancelled you can say this r and this r will also get cancelled anyways okay so what have we done to find out minimum friction we figured out friction and we wrote friction as mu mg cos theta because normal is mg cos theta now mu what is mu going to be take that cos over there sine by cos is tan theta and everything else has cancelled 2 into 1 plus the factor it's a solid cylinder for solid cylinder what will be the factor it will be half so it will be tan theta tan of 30 that's 1 by root 3 divided by 2 into 1 plus half well that's 3 by 2 so that's going to be 1 by 3 root 3 that's the answer thank you David yes very good Yalni was quick very good very good very good so Nitish why don't you do one thing ask me any doubt that you have on my Instagram handle definitely I'll help you out all the doubts yes ask me over there or leave a comment after the video and so I'll definitely help you out uh, Suryanshi same thing just ask me on Instagram or leave a comment below I'll post any link or any suggestion that will be needed so that value comes out to be 0.192 all right 1 by 3 root 3 approximately is 1 by 3 root 3 time for a break and then we'll head to the last part which is rotational motion uh, uh, sorry rotational energy and angular momentum and conservation okay let's take a five minute break okay i'm just starting up a timer because this is a long session out here so i'll just put a countdown timer out here and uh, that will be for five minutes okay so see you guys after the break yes break
Oh, well, 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 the break time is over. Uh, nice, nice, nice. Oh, first time on my YouTube class, I have actually given a break, guys. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, like a first thing, first time for everything. Good, good, good. So I hope you guys have regenerated, refreshed yourselves. Okay. Chalo. And guess what I did? Somebody said that maybe sir was cooking. Well, I was not cooking, but I just had one uh, piece of cake and uh, we just baked a cake uh, at home today and this is a chocolate, a chocolate cake. It was beautiful. I mean, it got a little bit spoiled. I mean, the outer crust was not that great. It was a little bit hard. The inside was really juicy and uh, it was a little bit on the sweeter side, uh, but it was nice. I mean, it was good. It was good. So, but it is very filling, you know, I mean, just have small piece of the uh, that big cake. I mean, it's going to make your stomach full. I'm not sure if I'm going to have my dinner. Beautiful or tasty, sir? Both. Uh, no, not beautiful. It is tasty. And that's all I can say. It's not beautiful. It doesn't look good. <laughs> oh, Yalin is having a FOMO. She didn't have anything. <laughs> great, great. Chala, guys, let's look at the next one. And that's rotational kinetic energy. Okay. few things left let's get going now anything which rotates has rotational kinetic energy and uh, the formula for that is half i omega square but what if it is rotating as well as translating then it has both kinds of energies one is rotational kinetic energy half i omega square and the translational kinetic energy which is half mv square so remember Whenever you have an object which is rotating and translating, this is the translational energy. Remember, this velocity is always velocity of center of mass. And this is the rotational kinetic energy. Again, the moment of inertia is always supposed to be measured about the center of mass. This is the formula. Okay, cool. Not sure sort of which assignment you're talking about. <laughs> okay, chalo. So whatever homework you want, you'll always get it on VNQs, guys. So guys, all the people on Catalyst is remember, we have long term batches which are going on for 11th, 12th standard. 11th standard batch is called as nurture. Let me just show that to you before going to this question. Okay, so if you go to VNQs, there you go. Okay, and if you go to videos out here, like you can see, this was Shibon Sir's class. You can see this is nurture class, okay. Even this one, this is also nurture class. This was conducted for the 11th standard students, understand? So this is 11th standard long term class. I have started kinematics, all right. Before that, I have completed units, dimensions, errors, vectors and all that. Similarly, you will see, you know, this one, this thumbnail, you will see it for the 12th standard batches. All right, that's me. So you can see class 12th physics. Right now, I have completed energy in capacitors. So that's Pathfinder series on VNQ's channel. And then you can also find this kind of thumbnails. This is for the passing out batch and even for the 12th standard students out there. So this is, you know, the rank booster series for 2021 with very good problem solving, um, you know, and concepts out there. And there are also recorded classes. I mean, the ones which were conducted a long time back in the playlist. So if you go in the playlist and if you go down a little bit, you will see zero to hero series, all the chapters, all the chapters, center of mass, rotation, communication, collision, semiconductors, units, friction, string and sound. All these lectures are arranged in this playlist. So these are zero to hero series, rank booster series for 2021 students. Even a neat student can attend these classes. Remember that. Okay. Yes. Oh, no problem, Nirmal. I mean, just make sure that you have the charger plugged in out there. Abhijit, life is good. <laughs> All right. Uh, so how to solve problems using instantaneous center of rotation. So DM Kids YT, I'll be conducting classes in the uh, what do you say rank booster series on those kind of questions for now today in marathon I just want to cover up all the basic basic concepts and the basic advanced level co uh, concepts so that you have some idea of rotation you get some confidence and why don't you join in in the rank booster series I'll be talking more about you know all these things in detail as well okay chalo 
have to how to calculate band gap in extrinsic oh my god why don't you uh, do one thing chemistry lover ask me on my instagram handle or post a comment after the video and i'll definitely yeah ask you uh, sorry answer all your doubts okay let's do this okay come on uh, nirmal's mobile rip uh, abdul salam 96% lower nit is abdul salam not the good ones okay for a body which is rolling translation and rotation are equal which kind of body it is i mean come on guys translational energy is half mv square rotational energy is half i omega square it's given it is equal okay this is simple moment of inertia m r okay i don't know i don't know the moment of inertia okay i and omega is v square by r square right so this will be half m v square and omega is v by r so now things have to cancel out half half goes v square v square goes so from this you are going to get i is equal to m r square whose moment of inertia is m r square ring right so that's the answer correct i'm very good i'm very good thank you guys for asking me let's see the next one so dmy kids yt you are in 12th standard then you should attend two series you should attend rank booster plus you should also attend you know the pathfinder series so two series are meant for you pathfinder will bring you to a certain level rank booster will take you to the next level okay thank you himanshu okay great great chalo let's do this well abhijit i don't know why maybe that's how it is <laughs> i don't know all right let's look at this uh, a ring and a disk of same mass roll without slipping along a horizontal surface with same speed if the ring's energy is 6 joules then the disk's energy is how many joules hello kanika welcome aboard yes vengada thank you so much and uh, ring's energy is okay so kinetic energy of the ring will be two types translation half mv square rotational what is the rotational half moment of inertia of the ring mr square correct moment of inertia into omega which is v by r whole square this is nothing but omega half i omega square r square r square will cancel guys okay this r square r square will cancel so this will be half mv square plus r square r square has gone so half m again v square so this will be just mv square but the ring's energy was clearly mentioned to be 6 joules so 6 is nothing but mv square now the question is what is the energy of the disk so kinetic energy of the disk will be half mv square plus half disk's moment of inertia will be mr square by 2 right mr square by 2 okay that's the moment of inertia of the disk into omega omega is v by r whole square so this will be half m v square plus r square r square will cancel so this will be m v square 2 to the 4 half plus 1 by 4 is 3 by 4 so 3 by 4 m v square but m v square that's 6 Six threes are eighteen. Eighteen by four, four point five joules. That's the answer. Excellent. A lot of you have got the answer. Beautiful. Very. Thank you, A. Pra Prakash. Thank you for all the love from Karnataka. Right now, I'm also in Karnataka in Bangalore. All righty. Thank you. Let's get going to the next type of question. Great. Now there is a rod. Now this is slightly tricky. Let's figure this out. It falls. It falls. It does not slip. when it is about to touch the ground this point will have some velocity the question is how much is this velocity okay it falls now to figure this out i think i have to do v is there will be some angular velocity v is omega r here r is nothing but the length of the rod so to figure out v i need to know what is the angular speed with which the rod hits the ground it often happens you keep a stick it loses balance it falls so with what speed does it hit the ground that's the question i think i need to use energy how i should use energy let's figure this out 
earlier the rod was vertical the center of mass was here now when it is about to hit the center of mass comes on the ground so there is loss of potential energy so the potential energy is loss is somebody else's gain whose gain the gain in the kinetic energy but what kind of kinetic energy does it have it only has rotational kinetic energy think about it when it falls it is rotating a rotating body it's not translating anything so only translating how potential loss center of mass has come down whenever you have some body let's say this is a body you want to measure the potential energy see where the center of mass is that's how you calculate potential energy if the center of mass comes down potential energy decreases if it goes up potential energy increases that's it okay now what is the loss of potential energy mg okay mg into h now what is the value by which it comes down can you guys answer it in the chat box can you guys answer it in the chat box what is the loss of the potential energy think about it what's the height by which the center of mass comes down think about it the center of mass is at l by 2 distance so it has come down by l by 2 correct l by 2 correct so it will be mg l by 2 is equal to half i omega square well 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 this 2 and this 2 gets cancelled but I can do something with this I what is the moment of inertia of the rod about the end about the end of the rod it is m l square by 3 correct m l square by 3 m l square by 12 is for center for the end it is m l square by 3 so it is m g l now see what and all will get cancelled l l m m so what are you going to get omega square is 3 goes up g goes up l comes down anything else that's it so omega will be root 3 yes yes root 3 g by l yes root 3 g divided by l that's the answer you can see that oh i think the answer was not given on the next slide but let me write it over here just for your reference omega was finally root 3 g by l that's the answer now once you get omega oh hold on we need to actually find the speed of the tip oh we had to find the speed of the tip so that was omega l so what will we do we will be omega into l that means substitute the value of omega 3g by l into l so that root l root l will cancel and eventually you are going to get root 3g l for the speed of the tip that's what we wanted correct yes very good very good very good excellent excellent all my warriors excellent my all warriors this is how you need to solve the problem let's go to the last second last topic which is angular momentum and then we'll go to conservation and torque uh, and angular momentum related questions so what is angular momentum defined as angular momentum is defined as r cross p for a particle at a distance of r from an axis having momentum p the angular momentum is r cross p you can use your right hand four fingers point it in the direction of r first then point it in the direction of p you will see the thumb will pop upwards that's the direction of the angular momentum some people also write this as l is equal to r cross mv and since m is a scalar you can also write it as m outside and r cross v it's all the same thing remember that it's all the same thing nothing is different correct oh excellent all right so let's see how many of you can do the question based on this if a particle moves in the xy plane the resultant angular momentum has most probably which kind of component x y both or z component come on a particle moves in the x y plane think about it what kind of component i'm oh, sorry what kind uh, where do you think the angular momentum is going to lie <clears throat> so first of all vikas ruhal momentum is vector kinetic energy is scalar change in the kinetic energy is the work done change in momentum is impulse okay 
momentum all right it has direction it tells you in how much impact a body has you know in a particular direction whereas kinetic energy tells you how much amount of energy is stored in it and when it hits something how much energy can be given by that so that's the difference okay i hope that's clear a lot of you are saying a well 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 that's wrong guys it's d and i'll tell you why it is d see if you have this x y plane and if you have a particle and if it is traveling with some velocity okay and this is the position vector just use your right hand rule place your four fingers of your right hand in this direction and then curl it in the direction of velocity r cross v where is your thumb coming towards you that's where l is and that's in the z direction z direction be careful a lot of people get confused uh chemistry tomorrow there is no uh, class of mine on v and q's or on catalysis my next class is going to be on monday monday i'm going to uh, complete third lecture of capacitors and that's going to be on uh, finding equivalent capacitance and using uh, kvl and also the plate problems on capacitors so you might want to watch the first two classes of capacitors in the pathfinder series on v and q's here is your next question coming up on your screen yep okay come on come on come on my warriors yes okay so this car is moving on a straight road the spando is uh, standing at a distance of rp as the car moves the angular momentum of the car with respect to pando will how will it change will it increase it will decrease it will remain constant or increase and then decrease or decrease and then increase what's going to happen uh nirmal it's not yet decided but i will let you know soon so if you are in the telegram channel yep you will get to know but nirmal uh, i would say and all the students not just here or uh, not just you all the students make sure that you please follow v and q's channel because that is the main channel understand right now okay that's where we are conducting our major classes for 2021 for 2022 and for 2023 please understand so i would request you know because we are the same teachers it doesn't make a difference and it doesn't make sense to also have too much of duplication work so remember v and q's is the main channel okay same well let's figure this out if you take this r okay if you take this r if you take this velocity okay then remember okay what you can do is angular momentum it's mr cross v but you can also write it as mrv sin theta yes mrv sin theta now what is theta well it's the angle between r and v okay now believe me r sin theta is just going to come out to be rp yep in fact instead of writing it in this way there are two ways of writing it this is the trick one is writing it as mr v perpendicular so ignore that v and sin theta and write it as v perpendicular or you can write it as m r perpendicular into v now what does each of these things mean this thing means okay you have this as r this as velocity you only consider the perpendicular component this is m r perpendicular component this thing over here okay this thing over here means okay you have this as r let's say this is v you just extend this line and just drop a perpendicular this is r perpendicular both will give you the same answer now look at this when the car is here and when it is here velocity is same velocity is same v is same m is same is r perpendicular same obviously yes because when the car is here on the line of velocity this is the perpendicular look at that on the line of velocity what's the perpendicular this is the perpendicular and when the car is here obviously the perpendicular is the same thing so guys r perpendicular is same v is same m is same so l is also same it will not increase or decrease remember that yes 
this is the trick which you should use so the answer for l is it remains same lot of people think oh r is decreasing guys even angle is changing the compensation happens and it remains as constant hello mr best welcome aboard yes the answer is it remains same r p m v correct now let's calculate the next question <sighs> okay so question is find the angular momentum of this ball when projected here as well as here with respect to oops with respect to a point here okay with respect to a point here let's do this so what we'll need to do first oops the answer is shown my bad my bad one second let's go back let's go back okay so with respect to this point here and here this is point a and this is point b okay for a the velocity is like this u the angle is like this this distance is range by 2 the total range divided by 2 so the angular momentum at point a will be nothing but m r r is r by 2 and v perpendicular which is u sin theta u sin theta so what is each term this is v perpendicular what is this this is the position vector of that mass from that point just substitute the value of the range you will get the answer that's how you need to solve this question I'm just showing you the method when you are at b this is height h the velocity is no longer u be careful at the topmost point only horizontal component is there and already things are perpendicular so you don't have to do much so l b will be mass r will be nothing but h so this is nothing but r and v is nothing but u cos theta this itself is the perpendicular component everybody knows the formula for height and range in a projectile just substitute it you will get the answer there is nothing great after this okay after this anybody can do it it's a cakewalk so the answers i have put it up on your screen for your further reference let's go ahead we just saw we just saw you know angular momentum for a particle but for a big body like this okay for a big body like this there are many particles the total angular momentum for the entire body is not mrv it is the sum of mrv mrv of one particle mrv of second particle mrv of third particle till the end particle and the final answer comes out to be i into omega this is something you should remember i omega moment of inertia into omega will be the total angular momentum of that body correct now <clears throat> the problem happens when the body is rotating and translating do you remember what we just did in kinetic energy when the body was rotating and translating what we did found a rotational energy separate kind uh, and translational energy separate the same thing has to be done for a body which is rotating and translating look at this look at this this is a body okay which is moving which has translation as well as rotation both so you split them up first think of only rotation only think of rotation about the center of mass and then forget that body treat it like one single mass and just look at the center of mass's velocity that's it and separate them out and you will get the answer so basically the total angular momentum of rotating plus translating body is given by angular momentum of spin or rotation plus angular momentum considering it's a point mass okay just think of it like a point mass yes just combine them you will get the total angular momentum now look at this you can see the terms the total angular momentum is icm omega that is for this one i omega is the formula for just a rotating body 
M R V, M R cross V was the formula when you treat it like a point mass. This is always for point masses. Remember, this is for point masses. This is for big bodies, big rotating bodies. Yes, this is the formula that you use. Okay, just remember this, you will get the answer. Okay, now how to use this is very important. Now, fine, you can take a screenshot, you can write it down in your notes, but how do we exactly use this? You will understand only from the next two questions. Okay, let's do this. <clears throat> Look at this. This is a disc, it's rolling, it has velocity v, okay? And the question is, find the angular momentum about the origin and a point B, which is at a distance R from the ground on the x-axis. Okay, uh, at a distance R from the x-axis. Well, this is simple. Okay, now, in fact, let me tell you, you take any point on the ground. Let's say this is the point. I want to measure the angular, uh, angular momentum of this guy with respect to some point on the x-axis. Let's find for a general point. What do we do? Split the motion into two parts, spin and translation. First thing is the spin with angular velocity omega. So the angular momentum of that disk will be the angular momentum for that rotation plus angular momentum of that point center of mass. Remember, always split it into two. What is the angular momentum of rotation? Well, look at that. It's I omega, I omega, but which direction it is rotating clockwise. Where is your thumb going? It's going inside. So it is minus K cap. It's going like this. So it's minus K cap. I hope you can see that. Next, that point mass, that point mass. Now this is the interesting part. It's going like this. Technically, this is r vector, this is r, this is v, this is actually velocity of center of mass. You know what I'm going to do? Well, look at this. All I'm going to do is extend this line of velocity and drop a perpendicular, drop a perpendicular. This is r perpendicular. And how much is the value of r perpendicular? It is the radius itself. So it doesn't matter where this point is, the perpendicular will remain the same. Doesn't matter, you are here or here or here, the perpendicular distance of this line of velocity from that point will remain the same. So guys, this value is going to be R, M, V, and check that direction, R is over here. Okay, if you cannot see that, look at this. R is like this. Take your four fingers of right hand like that. Velocity is towards your right side. R cross V, the thumb goes inside. R cross V, it's inside. That means this value is also <clears throat> minus K cap. This is also minus K cap. Now, uh, yes, it's your wish to con uh, consider what is positive, what is negative, but remember, I cross J is always K. So Z axis according to the right hand rule has to come towards you. That's why it is negative. Okay, YT, uh, DM y, kids YT. Okay, what is I? I is M R square by two. What is omega? Because it is rolling, because it is rolling, that's why it is V by R. K cap and minus R M V K cap. Well, R and R cancels. So minus half minus one is minus three by two. So minus three by two, minus three by two, M R V K cap. That's the answer. That's the answer, negative. Is that clear? Everybody understood how to solve this question? Shall we go ahead? Shall we go ahead? Very good, very good. Let me know. Come on guys, understood or no? Let me know if you guys have any doubt anywhere. Okay, chalo, I guess no doubts. 
now yep similarly there is one more question which you can solve it's very easy okay don't worry if you did not understand the previous one so much this question will give you more confidence again there is a rod you are looking at it from the top okay and it is rotating like this and translating it's rotating and translating this is one of the toughest things guys that's why it will take some time it's not so easy okay the question is find the angular momentum always start with angular momentum of that rod will be angular momentum of rotation plus angular momentum of translation of center of mass okay now for rotation for rotation look at that it's rotating so just use i omega but what kind of rotation does it have anti clockwise where is the thumb coming towards you so if i take this as x this as y naturally something coming towards you is the positive z axis so it is plus k cap everybody fine till here yes dm y kids it's nothing but you know see in the previous question this was velocity this was r this will be r perpendicular take your fingers four fingers stand like this okay i'm thinking as if i'm you take your right hand four fingers are up r cross v where does it go inside that's why it was inside r cross v i hope that's clear in this case omega is like that so it's towards you so plus k cap okay is that fine next plus translational angular momentum think of this big rod as a point mass guys think of this as point mass isn't this velocity the velocity of the center of mass this is the velocity of center of mass now where is r vector from that point r position vector is here think guys what will be the value of m r cross v r and v are parallel angle is zero this will be zero is that understood r is here v is there r cross v zero angle sin zero is zero hence the final answer will be moment of inertia which is ml square by 12 into omega k hat that's the angular momentum of the rod that's it done 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 great 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 let's get going ahead to the next question yep these are some good questions guys which i have planned for all of you okay now just like you have force is dp by dt okay but this is in translation in rotation what do you have torque is dl by dt which is nothing but rate of change of angular momentum rate of change of angular momentum is nothing but torque keep this in mind dl by dt as simple as that hello vishwa very good priyanka thank you pavitra okay so let's get going with a question based on this concept the angular momentum versus l versus time graph height is 20 20 20 base is 1 2 3 4 5 sorry not 20 10 10 10 10 10 this is 1 1 1 1 1 what is the torque at 4 seconds let's do this okay let's go by definition torque is a dl by dt rate of change of something derivative is nothing but slope so it's slope of l versus time graph for your convenience at four seconds there is already a tangent which is drawn you can see that over here this is the tangent which is drawn for all of you for your convenience this is your tangent now the problem is how do we measure the slope it's not so easy well observe carefully this tangent passes through this point very clearly and it also passes through this point over here it passes through these two points now what is the meaning of slope slope is 
delta L by delta T, slope, height by base. Can you see this? There is a triangle which is formed over here. Height by base. What's the height? What's the height? 10, 40. What's the height? Isn't it 30? Can you see that? The height is 30. And what's the base? 1, 2, 3. Isn't it 3? Check this out. Isn't the base 3? In case you did not figure that out, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is 10, 20, 30, 40. So 40 minus 10 and uh, what is it? 5 minus 2. That's what it is. So this is going to be 30 by 3, which is 10. That's it. Very good, Prajwal. Very good, Vikas. Yes, that's it. So a lot of people will fail over here because they will not realize what they have to do. Tangent is given. They will sit and ca calculate that angle. No need. You just need to measure height and base because it is passing through these two points. That's it. That's all you need to do. Agree. That's the answer. 10, yeah, Newton, <coughs> meter. Let's go to the last part. And that's angular momentum conservation. Ready, guys? Why not 7.5? Uh, wait, let me go back. Where is my remote? Why should it be 7.5? I'm not sure, Priyanka. <coughs> Uh, I mean, like, since it's just passing through this point, and what is it, this point, maybe it's not s clearly seen, um, you know, in your screen right now, but when you download the PDF, you'll see it is actually passing through these two points. So you can see there is a triangle form. This is theta, this is the tangent. So tan theta will be this divided by this. So this is 10 and this is 40, 40 minus 10 is 30 and this is 3. That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And oh yeah, the question also says at 4 seconds. So at 4 seconds. So that's the tangent which you have to consider. Okay. Now, you can try this out at home if you have this kind of a rotating chair. Hold two weights. Rotate yourself. Bring them closer. You will see your angular speed pops up. Reason? When you are on this rotating chair, the friction experience is negligible. Let's neglect it. If there is no friction or less friction or it has to be neglected, the torque by the friction is zero. Other forces will not give any torque like gravity, normal, will not give any torque in this direction. If there is no torque, then remember since torque is rate of change of angular momentum, and if there is no torque, what will happen? Angular momentum will not change. Angular momentum will not change. And because of this, the product of I and omega, remember angular momentum was I into omega, the product will remain constant. Hence, when you take these dumbbells or weights and bring them closer, what will happen is that the moment of inertia will reduce. Oh yeah, sure, you will forget if you keep rotating like this for sure. Yes, seriously preparing, it is enough for J for the start. But I also teach on Enthuse channel, please watch my lectures on Enthuse. That is the main channel, remember that. So, moment of inertia will reduce. If moment of inertia reduces, to keep the product of inertia into omega constant, what will happen? Omega will increase. I decreases, omega increases. If I increases, omega decreases. So that's how omega changes. That's what you can see over here. This dude. Yeah, you can see when he brings it closer, it the speed increases. So what is conservation of angular momentum? All right. So guys, Net torque is zero, angular momentum is conserved. Torque is zero, then angular momentum is constant about that point. And remember, energy and linear momentum may or may not be conserved. Why am I saying this? Because linear momentum is conserved only if net force is zero. That's what it is. And mechanical energy, it is conserved if non-conservative 
forces don't do work don't do work only then mechanical energy is conserved like friction air resistance resistive forces are not going to do anything only then kinetic plus potential will be constant and linear momentum when net force is zero keep this in mind thank you seriously preparing okay this is something which you should keep in mind very important slide for all of you each one has a different thing if net torque is zero this is because if torque is zero dl by dt is zero only then l is constant this is basically this part let's do this okay i hope you have written it down no problem levy my throat is now going to ache any moment okay i just have two more problems and i think i cannot yeah go more than that also all right this is also called shear second law of rotational motion <laughs> Yes, I know Pavitra, I am tired because I have been continuously teaching for two and a half hours. And let me tell you one thing, teaching on YouTube is much more strenuous than conducting a normal class. Many people do not know this. Yeah, you think teaching on a big board over here is much easier than teaching in a regular class? No, uh, teaching in a regular class is much easier. Teaching in uh, offline on uh, you know in front of students it's even more easier online is little bit more difficult when you come on youtube it's even more strenuous okay so the ratio people i have been talking to a lot of teachers that's this is what they say one hour on youtube is two hours of normal classes that's how it goes yeah one hour on youtube is two hours of normal online classes on vedantu platform and one hour on normal online classes is around 1.5 to 2 hours of offline teaching so basically one hour of youtube is almost four hours of uh, normal offline teaching so think of this this way i'm teaching teaching for three hours so you do the math <laughs> okay let's do this where are we yeah <clears throat> okay come on Let's do this. Okay, a stationary girl, okay, she jumps onto a merry-go-round of mass 4m, okay, spinning at speed omega. What will be the new angular speed? What will be the new angular speed? Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, come on. Okay, now I'll just think of the two situations. The first situation is when this girl is not even there on the merry-go-round but the merry-go-round is rotating with omega this is the first situation the second situation the girl is on that merry-go-round okay and both of them are rotating with a new speed omega one obviously the moment of inertia has changed that's why omega has changed you can see that if you take both of them as a system Okay, you both take both of them as a system, the torque acting on them externally is zero. Hence, because of that, the angular momentum of the system is constant. Angular momentum conservation. Now, what is the initial angular momentum? This girl was outside, okay, so she has no angular momentum. This disc is rotating, so angular momentum is i of the disc which is m what is the mass of the disc 4m okay so 4m r square by 2 this is your moment of inertia into omega that's your initial angular momentum then final angular momentum so let's do this final angular oh people have already um, started answering very good very good very good uh, Hemu, I would say please follow VNQs. That's the main channel that you guys have to follow. All right. Please understand that all the series of 21, 22, 23, all the plan for J, NEET, everything is happening out there. So please try and follow VNQs. That's the more important channel that you're going to follow. Finally, both the moment of inertia will get added. So 4M R square, okay, by 2 plus 
the girl is like a point mass. So for a point mass, okay, what is the moment of inertia? It is just mR square. That's the total new moment of inertia. The disc plus the girl. Disc, disc is mR square by 2 and girl is just mR square. But remember the disc mass is 4m and into nu omega. That's it. Now solve this. It's not that difficult. This will become 2mR square and this will become 2mR square plus mR square. That is nothing but 3mR square into omega 1. Are you able to see that? Are you able to see that guys? Yep. So that means omega 1 will be nothing but 2 by 3. Oops, omega was there. 2 by 3 into omega. That's the answer. Ah, my God. Somebody said 4 by 5. Oh, no, 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 no. 4 by 5 wrong. It is 2 by 3 guys. I don't know why you guys said 4 by 5. Lot of people said 4 by 5. I can see that. Nah. Okay. Uh, achha, it is not given, is it? Uh, oh, okay. So I thought ki it was a little bit obvious since it's a merry-go-round. So the mass is there everywhere. So it's not obviously a ring. So it's a disc. Actually, it should be given. Okay. So I have considered the merry-go-round as a disc because the mass is there everywhere. Right. It's not a ring. That's why. Oh, that's why I think many of you got 4 by 5 or something else. Okay. Great. Great. Last question for tonight. Let's get going. Let's get going. <laughs> okay, so there is a rod which is hanging and there is a bullet which comes, hits it, gets stuck in it and they both move together. Question is, after the impact, what is the new angular velocity? Let's do this question. Okay. Now before, this rod was at rest. This bullet was moving with a speed. How much speed? U. Where did it hit? Well, it hit at a distance of 3 L by 4. This rod was at rest, this bullet came and hit. Afterwards, what happened? Both rotate because it gets stuck. It's stuck. It's an inelastic collision. Both move together. The question is, what's this speed? Again, remember this distance is 3L by 4, wherever the bullet gets stuck. Can I conserve angular momentum about the hinge? Can I conserve angular momentum about the hinge? Take both of them as a system. If you take both of them as a system, understand on them the external torque about the hinge is zero. The hinge might experience some force, but that force cannot produce any torque. The bullet hitting the rod is internal force. It's not external force. Any other force is not going to produce any torque. It's not going to produce any torque. Hence, because the torque is zero, that tells me the angular momentum of the rod plus bullet is going to be constant. It's going to be constant. Let's do this now. What is going to happen? Initial angular momentum. What's the initial angular momentum? The angular momentum of the rod will be zero. Why? Because it is at rest. What is the angular momentum of this guy? This is like a point mass. I told you the formula. M R perpendicular V. Yes, use that. Mass of the bullet, M. R is perpendicular. What is the perpendicular? This is the perpendicular distance on the line of velocity. That means it is 3L by 4. Okay. So I'll annotate this. This is for the rod. This is R perpendicular and V is U. That's initial guys. Left side is initial. Done, done, done. done. Right hand side. Remember total angular momentum is constant. So initial angular momentum will be final angular momentum. Now look at this. These two together is one single body because it has got stuck to it. So what's the new moment of inertia? What is the moment of inertia of the bullet? Well, mR square. So m into 3L by 4 
square this is for the bullet this is for the bullet plus what is the moment of inertia of the rod about the end remember about the center it is ml square by 12 but about the end it is ml square by 3 so what's the rod's mass that's 3m so 3m l square by 3 into let me erase this this is no longer needed okay into the new angular velocity i omega moment of inertia into omega this is for the rod at the end formula ml square by 3 yes no balaka it is not ml square by 12 be careful it's not yep it is ml square by 3 center and the center it is ml square by 12 at the end use parallel axis theorem you will get ml square by 3 we have been doing this long time back okay be careful now it's simplifying this entire situation so this will be nothing but 3 by 4 mlu and on rhs what am i going to get okay this will be 9 by 16 okay so i'm just going to get ml square and i'll also get omega and here i will have 9 by 16 plus 1 9 by 16 plus 1 is nothing but 25 by 16 and you will have ml square omega and here you have 3 by 4 mlu now a lot of things are going to get cancelled okay like m m l l 4 16 4 now you just need to figure out what is omega so omega will be 3 u okay things are going to come down l one of the l is remaining and 25 check this out and that o this 4 also has to go up so 4 into 3 that will become 12 yes so 12 u by 25 l that should be the answer yes yes now we are took care of the 4 also yeah 4 is also gone up understood done 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 12 u by 25 so beautiful question on angular momentum conservation like you can see yep 12 u by 25 so guys if you have loved today's video do not forget to smash the like button and remember to go and hit the subscribe button on v enthuse channel because that's where we are going to be so i really want you to appreciate that there is no point of duplication so come ahead Go, uh, go to VNQ's channel. That's where we are conducting all our series. So all you need to do is just search for VNQ's channel. This is how our channel looks like. This is an English medium channel. We have lots of series for 11th, 12th and the outgoing students, including droppers. Even if you are a niche student, you are welcome here. What kind of videos do we have? I'll just repeat these thumbnails that you see, these ones okay these are for the 11th standard they are called as the nurture series these thumbnails that you see the black ones okay the black ones over here these are for your 12th standard and the blue ones that you see that's for the outgoing students 2021 student okay so go ahead check out all the videos you'll find all the topics in detail out there thank you guys very much and if you want to yeah get in touch with me go ahead follow me on my instagram handle that's it for tonight. We just managed to complete this, with, you know, just two more minutes to go for nine o'clock and three hours. And we are just done with the complete rotational marathon. Bye bye, guys. This was Strias here, your master teacher of physics, Astala Vista.